I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile. We are speaking with Christy Garienti, who is the Teacher of the Year for the Folsom Cordova Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. So tell us what subject you teach and at what school you teach. I teach chemistry at Folsom High School and honors chemistry and sometimes AP Environmental Science. And I've been teaching for 18 years, all at Folsom High. All at Folsom High School? Yeah. That was, was that where you started teaching? I did. I actually did my student teaching at Folsom High School when it was on the Riley campus in the old, in the old site. So it's been my entire career at Folsom High. Oh, wow. So tell us about, about teaching chemistry. It's a very complex subject, um, uh, at least for me. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, so what are some things that you do to make it relatable to students and to make it more understandable? I think that's uh, the whole goal of my teaching is to try to get the kids to connect the concepts to other life experiences. So in thinking about things like uh, why ice melts, it's a very simplistic process, you know, on the surface, we've all experienced that phenomena, but getting them to understand in depth what's happening at the molecular level uh, with the particles that cause them to change state like that. So getting them to connect their things that they've observed in nature with uh, what's really happening at that particle level. Um, I think that's been uh, the, my primary goal, but then also you have to stay relevant with what they understand in pop culture. So mm -hmm. I use, for example, the law of Paula Abdul, which is what I call this opposites attract phenomena in uh -huh. chemistry. Uh, that was that was pretty good back when they knew who Paula Abdul was. Now you but have to find <laughs> new artists to write your music Now I to. have to yeah. explain who Paula Abdul is and what opposites attract is uh, for them to understand that phenomena. So you really have to kind of search for common everyday things and say, hey kids, this is chemistry, this is science. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And so let's talk about uh, the fact that, you know, girls in your class will look at you as a role model and if they're interested in science, they might think, hey, this is something for me because, you know, traditionally people think of boys in science and boys in, in that field. Right. So I think we've got a couple different things addressing that right now. One is that uh, chemistry has kind of been classically at the high school level uh, the precursor to when that differentiation occurs. So we've always had quite a few males and females imbalanced in terms of our numbers in chemistry. However, it's the next course, which would be physics typically, or the continuation of study where, where that differentiation goes on. So making sure we are advocating for women in science and in all STEM fields, um, engineering fields especially, this is the precursor to that. So obviously it's always been a goal of mine to make sure that I lead by example as a woman who is uh, working in this field, um, but also encouraging my students to know that, they're, that this is a possibility, encouraging them to continue on their studies and uh, that, that this is a possible a career choice or career path for them. So what are some things you do to advocate women in STEM or in science? I think setting up a collaborative classroom where all voices are heard and matter instead of just focusing on uh, kids that would be natural at it, encouraging the students, going over with them prior to their next course selection to make sure they understand what's going on. When we look at the history of chemistry, there's a lot of what I call the science dudes that have been figuring out atomic theory, so always trying to weave in the stories where possible of uh, the, where their women counterparts that have also led to scientific discovery that's been critical and crucial to our current understanding. So have you always taught science? Yes. So what, what brought about this love of science, chemistry? So I remember being in high school and learning about deoxyribonucleic acid, DNA, mm -hmm. and loving genetics. And so when I went to Sac State, the closest thing they had to genetics major was molecular biology. And it just turned out that um, in studying molecular biology, you had to study so much chemistry that I ended up with a chemistry minor. And I like chemistry because uh, it's not just content. So biology is a lot of content, but chemistry is process. So it's what are the molecules actually doing? And it's also the application of mathematics to the science as well to understand where the mass is going and what changes are occurring at the particle level. So um, I've always just enjoyed studying science and so that led me to teaching and the credential in biology and chemistry and the job that was available was a chemistry position and I've been teaching chemistry ever since. And also chemistry is a process, teaching is a process as well. You probably apply 
ideas of chemistry toward your teaching as well as the way you approach things. Absolutely, yeah, I think so. You you learn um, about your learners and also about people in general and what is effective at communicating. Um, and I think that's the key to what what we do in the classroom, right? You have to be able to make lessons that are interesting and that can engage the students and also be fun and relevant to the content and to what's going on in their lives. So teaching has always been kind of a desire for you. I, you know, when I was young, I didn't want to be a teacher because oh, really? I saw how hard my teachers worked and I thought, <laughs> I am not doing that. So I thought I would go into genetic counseling and then as my path kind of shifted and veered as when I became a mother, I realized that I didn't uh, have the opportunity to stay home with my children and so I wanted to do something where I felt like it was worth my time not being with my own children and I thought, well, what would be more worth my time than being with other people's children who also weren't home with them? And so that's what led me to teaching. I had done everything uh, that you could do that would be teacher related, like I tutored all through high school and college. Um, I worked in a store where we sold product that I had to learn and teach other people about rocks and minerals. And so um, I've kind of always been teaching even when I was self-proclaimed not going to be a teacher. <laughs> you were a teacher and you didn't know it at the exactly, time. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So in your field, there's constant change. And so professional development is really important. What are some things you do to keep up on the latest information? So we definitely uh, news, right? Watching the news, watching the Facebook feeds, uh, staying active in national Facebook groups for AP Environmental Science and for uh, the Next Generation uh, Science Standards and the chemistry groups where teachers will post articles uh, that keeps me up to date. Um, all, also, I think being actively involved in our professional development community. So for example, here in the Sacramento area, we have the Sacramento Area Science Project, SASP, and we have CIRC, which is Science in the River City, uh, coordinated partnerships between Sac State and UC Davis, where science teachers come together for highly effective professional development through the year or through summer institutes, and I've been an active part of those my entire career. So the very first SASP Institute I went to was the summer uh, right before I got my credential even as a student teacher and I've been engaged in those projects ever since and I think as science teachers we have to continuously evolve our understanding of science in order to stay relevant. What's the biggest challenge you face uh, not just as a science chemistry teacher but as a teacher in general? I think the biggest challenge I face is juggling all of the responsibilities. Uh, I tend to be very passionate about what I do, so I get involved in a lot of different parts mm -hmm. of life, and so just juggling that responsibility and being personally tending to my time management so that I can not only teach, but do all the prep work that is regard involved in teaching, but also advise groups of students in many different activities, and also mentor new teachers, and then also still maintain a positive family life uh, where I'm engaged with my own husband and my children in their own activities. So juggling it all is So it's hard, it's hard to teach students time management if you haven't mastered it yourself. Exactly, exactly. So, and then being that role model for them on how they can balance all the things in their lives. So what does it mean to you to be named a Teacher of the Year for your district? It is a very, um, I'm so honored uh, to have been selected by my school and my district. Um, it's, I was thinking a lot about recognition and how in a lot of business communities they, take, they do a lot of things to recognize their employees. But in the education community, we don't do that as often. And we're also a group of people who don't take well to being recognized, right? We kind of like to do our own thing and um, not be called out. And um, so I thought it was very nice. It was wonderful. There was a wonderful celebration from our district. And then I know we will at the county level as well. Um, it was very nice to be recognized by my colleagues and, um, and to be honored in this way. It feels like a capstone moment of my career, so I very much appreciate it. Well, your district is filled with good teachers and you're a representative of that. Yes, I yeah. agree, thank yeah. you. Well, thank you for being with us. We've been speaking with Christy Garianti, who is the Teacher of the Year for the Folsom Cordova Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.